By the grace of our Lord Jesus, let us read now from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 7 and verse 21. Book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 21. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness required of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For, the carnally, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual, spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness to, with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Amen. The truth is that within this church, we all, we all, that is, whoever God has brought, we are, or we ought to be, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and that is, if we suffer with Him, if we suffer with Him, so that we may become partakers of His glory. Furthermore, our Lord Jesus Christ says, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. It is, in other words, a, a battle, and our goal is to enter through the narrow gate, and it is a difficult life, so that we may continue to walk in the difficult path. 
everything could be very easy without a struggle nor sorrow with one condition when we are born again the law of the flesh and sin leaves from within our body but this doesn't happen we have to put this thing to death and we can put the works of the flesh to death so the mind of the flesh only if we walk according to the Spirit and only by the Holy Spirit so the Apostle Paul says with with certainty here he says I know therefore that there is this law that reveals that I want to do what is good and I rejoice in the law of God in the inner man but within me there is evil and why is there evil because I see that in my members there is another law warring against the, the law of my mind and he brings me into captivity into the law of sin which is in my members he knows this, he doesn't have a doubt about it. That within his members, there is a law of sin. The law of the flesh. For he is still in this earthly vessel. The vessel of death, the body of death. And this law of sin is made manifest through the works of the flesh. With angers with uh, envy, with strife, with evil desires, with wicked uh, thoughts. <laughs> so, for this law to be destroyed, which exists and is found within us, and it is the law of Esau, which had governed him, taken over him, what is required is for us to fight the good fight to suffer along with all the saints through Jesus Christ so that we may become partakers in the glory of Christ and finally true heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ as children of God that is that we be governed by the Holy Spirit so that we may truly be children of God that is so that we may walk not according to the flesh fulfilling the desires and the works of the flesh but by walking in the Spirit so that by the Holy Spirit we may put to death the works of the flesh so that we may live in the presence of God and this is a struggle. This isn't a simple thing. It is a difficult thing. And furthermore, it is so difficult, so difficult, that the Apostle Paul calls this impossible, so that man is not able, with his own abilities, strengths, and attempts, to become an executor of the law, a doer of the law. So for that reason he cries out, Oh, I am a wretched man. Who will deliver me from this body of death? And the answer, my dearest brothers and sisters, is one and only. Only God, and indeed only through Jesus Christ, and furthermore, only in the Holy Spirit. So, by recognizing that only God, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, is able to transform this earthly man into a spiritual being, he confesses and says, So, I serve God, the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I am destined and condemned to work and serve the law of sin. 
And my hope, my only hope, is the Father through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to be my helper in this struggle of mine. In my Christian life, that God wants for every one of us, no one can fulfill this life and walk in it. And once again, we will say what the Christian life that God wants for us is in our personal course. Five basic things. First of all, spiritual church life by continuing and waiting upon the doctrine of the apostles, fellowship with one another, breaking of bread, and prayers. Secondly, a spiritual personal relationship through the Word of God and our personal prayer with God. There where the Father is revealed in secret through Jesus Christ. And then man knows the God who is revealed, but also Jesus Christ the Lord through the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, within the church, God has placed us to be guardians of our brothers. By fulfilling the commandment of the Lord, love one another as I have loved you. So the Christian who lives a spiritual Christian life, nourishes, takes care and protects because he loves and long suffers and endures and excuses and forgives his brother and sisters. And if he believes that he is strong at some point, he, he lifts the weaknesses of his brothers and sisters and any form of strength that he may have or weakness that his brother may have. Thirdly, because our life is not only in the church, it is also in the world. In the world, Christ makes us light, and we must be light. So if our eye is good, is kind, then only is our body bright. If out in the world our eye is wicked and evil, then our whole body is dark and we are never light. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. No one lighting a lamp and hide does he hide it under the lampstand, under the cupboard. But he puts it on a lampstand so he can shine bright and so that men can see our good works and glorify our Heavenly Father. And finally, the Christian has a spiritual Christian life against those who hate him, who are at enmity with him, who curse him and do harm to him. And he has a right spiritual life to pray, to love them, to bless them, and to do good to them. This Christian life cannot be fulfilled from any man with his own attempts, his own devotion, his own strength, even his own prayer. The Apostle Paul, Paul is sure about this, and for that reason he says, This body of death, I who am a wretched my, man, the Father will deliver me from this body of death through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And he explains how. For that reason, there is no condemnation or judgment against those who are in Christ Jesus, the Christians, in other words, that God has added to His holy church. But whom? Not all those Christians. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, but not all of them. Only those who walk according to the Spirit and in no condition to those who walk according to the flesh. So within the Church of Christ, who is born-again Christian, baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, with talents, with gifts, with ministries, 
If you do not want this to be in your life, and if we don't want there to be condemnation and judgment in our life, then it is necessary for us to pay attention not only to live according to the Spirit, but to also walk according to the Spirit, because only the law of the Holy Spirit and the life of Christ Jesus delivers us, or is able to deliver us from the law of sin, because it is impossible for the law of God that is powerless, that is mighty, to deliver us. And that is why God sent His only begotten Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of our sin. And that is how He condemned sin in our flesh. And then, the righteous requirement of the law of God is fulfilled. We become doers of the law. The requirement of the law is fulfilled only in those who walk according to the Spirit and never to those who walk according to the flesh. So it is very crucial, a very important point of our Christian life. And this is how do we walk in the Church of Christ. Not how do we pray, nor what do we believe in the end nor what we live. All these things are very good because by faith we are saved. And this is a gift of God, the grace of Christ, so that no flesh may boast. By faith Christ has regenerated us. By faith we have been baptized and watered to the remission of sins. By faith <coughs> we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. By faith God gives us grace in His church. But not by strength nor my, by might of human strength, but only through the power of the Holy Spirit will we be able to walk according to the Spirit, pleasing God our Father in our personal life. I could mention the family and church life, which is the truth, but today the message from heaven is, is directed to our personal life, my dear brothers and sisters. And our completely personal life, there we are completely alone. Because we may have a family and children and brothers and sisters and a, and a church, but you are always alone in the presence of Christ. You stand alone. You are judged alone. You will wait for the day of the Lord that is near alone. And then He will change things, either unto good or to worse. And in the end, you will serve alone in the work of the Lord by walking alone according to the Spirit and rejecting the mind of the flesh and the walk according to the flesh. For it is written, only if you walk according to the Spirit will you not fulfill the desires of the flesh. If you do not walk according to the Spirit, you have lost the presence of the Holy Spirit and the guidance and the ruling of the Holy Spirit in your life and then you will definitely fulfill the desires of the flesh and you will end up you who are the blessed of your father you will end up walking in the path of Esau you will walk with Esau's wisdom that is earthly carnal and sensual and this is absolutely dangerous always for all Christians and especially for the Christians of the last generation who do not wait for the Lord to come and take them for the personal invitation where they will be able even at the last moment to repent and call upon the name of Christ but the last generation waits for and generally the Lord to come and receive us with the rapture of the church and then 
if we are not of those who walk according to the Spirit, then God will discern that we are of the foolish virgins and not of the wise. <coughs> or, those who live according to the flesh are mindful of the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit are mindful of the things of the Spirit. And what is important is what we are mindful of. And we'll repeat this once again. How is it that a man can walk truly according to the Spirit, which means with ruling and guidance of the Holy Spirit, ruling in his heart and guidance in his heart, so that he may be a true child of God? Because man is triune. He has flesh, he has soul, and he has a spirit. And the flesh is expressed through his life and the desires of the flesh. That we may simply say, man likes this, man enjoys it. From the most simple thing, I like to eat fish, you like meat, and someone else likes uh, lobster, let's say. But this isn't the only thing that shows what man likes. What man likes leads man to make decisions. So the man who walks according to the Spirit decides according to the desires of the Spirit. But the man who wants, the man who walks according to the flesh decides according to the desires of the flesh. But he who wants to walk according to the Spirit goes to Him alone, who is able to help Him through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and He confesses that I, I a carnal man, my flesh likes that thing. You, Lord, what do you like? And then He will discern that God will intervene. And He will reveal to Him he who re is revealed in secret, in the secret place, the secret pl prayer room, he will, dis he, will, he will reveal his good pleasure toward this man who prays. And this man who is spiritually minded will be in, in enthusiastic with the answer of the Lord. And so he will make the decision to not walk according to the desires of his heart, but according to what God is pleased with. And but because man is also a soul and he expresses his desires through his heart and through his des um, desires. And God says that my desires are not your desires, my counsels are not yours. And this man knows, who is spiritual, that his desire is very far away, as far as the heavens are from the earth, from what God wants. For that reason... The man who wants to walk according to the Spirit, he goes to his Heavenly Father, the only one who can help him and save him, so that he may walk according to the Spirit. And he tells him, this is what I want, but my Lord and God, what do you want? And God immediately answers to him, who asks with boldness according to the will of God. And he will present his will, God will present his will to him again. And very easily, man will be able to reject his will, his own human will, which was so mighty when he desired something. But when he stands before the will of God, which is so glorious, when it is revealed to him, he changes. And so having the knowledge of this, that this is the will of God, with the help of Christ, he will do it and he will be pleasing to God. And by the Holy Spirit, he will be able to destroy the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh that are, that want the earthly things, that want the carnal things, the temporary things, the shakeable things. But the heavenly man of God that is eternal wants the eternal things, the heavenly things. But man has also a spirit, and the spirit is the logic of man. What well, Christ says, the Word of God, and man knows this, that my ways are not your ways. My opinion is not, 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 it's not your opinion. My judgments are not your judgments. My righteousness is not your righteousness. My plan for you 
is not a plan that you have for yourself. And my work for you is not that which you want to work in. Those are as far away as the heavens are from the earth, because man, once again, prayerfully, in his personal prayer, and please do this, my dear brethren, you will see the great difference. When you go in your secret place of prayer and kneel, take the Bible with you and read it at the same time. And then you will see how the Word of God will come alive. And man will reveal, God will reveal things to you in secret. And He will repay you out in the open. He will reveal His own plan, His own work. The good counsel that He has for you. And your life now will be under the governing of the Holy Spirit. Four. The ways of the flesh are at enmity with God. For because the carnal mind is enmity against God, and it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be, and it doesn't please God. But whoever is of the Spirit pleases God. And you know, there's a good example here. It is very important whom you want to please. You see a young girl that adorns herself, puts her hair like this and that, she smiles and is all, and she, whom does she want to like? Whom does she want to please? Who does she want to please? Of course not Christ. You see a young man, he shows his muscles, his body, he's great, he's a clever, but whom does he want to please? Definitely not Christ. And anyway, he pleases the devil, and we have to say everything with, out in the open. On the contrary, a woman that is modest, that is holy, whose adornment is a meek and humble spirit, which is pleasing to God. She doesn't like to color her face, to put makeup on and do this and that, and show herself off with gold and silver, or anything else that adds to her beauty. She wants to please Christ. And she makes sure to please Christ. The same thing goes to the young man, but not only the young people, also the older and old women and men, all of us. Whom do we want to please? This is a crucial question, and you will be able to understand this by your actions, by your thoughts, and by your desires. I want to please my Lord. And because I'm afraid I might say this only with my mouth, I say at the same time, Lord, help me please you. Jesus, help me please you only. The Apostle Paul says, Why, do we want to please men and not God? <coughs> I do not want to please any man. I want to please Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen, my brothers. This is so serious, so crucial. The Apostle says, you now who have understood and who want this, you are no longer of the flesh, but you are of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And it dwells gloriously. The Holy Spirit dwells. It dwells. Not I am baptized in the Holy Spirit. But it dwells in it, and it's glorified. It leads me, it guides me, it rules me. He is the ruler of my life. The Holy Spirit is the Lord in my life, in the church. But we remain in our personal life. Is He? He will be only if we have the mindset of Christ. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery. To be equal with God. But he sacrificed the heavenly palaces of glory so he can do the will of God. And so after he emptied himself of glory, after he denied himself, he picked up his cross. And taking the form of a bondservant, he became, came in the likeness of men. Who? The Almighty One. The Eternal One. The Lord, 
the true God in the likeness of men and when he found himself according to appearance as man what did he do? he humbled himself he humbled himself becoming obedient to the will of God that is the mindset of the Holy Spirit and the mindset of Christ and until till when? to death essentially and as a time frame he could have escaped death very easily but he came to die and God wants us to not want to escape death through the world but that we may be dead according to the world and alive in Christ what does dead mean? dead according to the mindset of the fresh, uh, flesh according to the desire of the heart and according to the arrogance of this world so if the Spirit of Christ, if the mindset of Christ is not in someone, that he isn't of Christ. But he is not but he is in the church. He doesn't belong to Christ though. He isn't Christ. He doesn't belong to him. Christ is not his Lord and God. Christ is uh, the paraclete, the Spirit of Truth is not the Lord in his life. Because if Christ were his Lord, then his body would be dead for sin and our spirit his spirit would be alive for the righteousness of God and so only if the spirit of God dwells in us that raised Christ from the dead then he who raised Christ from the dead by the Holy Spirit will revive and give life to the mortal bodies this body of death that Paul called said before cried out and said who will deliver me from this body so only if the Spirit of God dwells and the mindset of Christ prevails in our life then he who raised Christ by the Holy Spirit he himself, God, will also raise us up, will raise these bodies, these mortal bodies, unto eternal life and for the glory of God. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we are in debt, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for we have died to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, we will die. So today, God invites us to condemn our flesh, to condemn the ways of the flesh, to ask from God to help us so that we may be of the Spirit. Let us not fulfill the desires of the flesh, but let us fulfill the desires of God through the Holy Spirit. My dearest brothers and sisters, this is an invitation. An invitation as if Christ were here. That is at least how God showed me this. He said, whoever wants to come behind me, do you want to follow Christ? <laughs> do you want to walk behind Jesus? You have to deny yourself. There's no other way for you to walk according to the Spirit and to put the works of the death of the flesh to death by the Holy Spirit. You have to deny yourself. Pick up your cross. It isn't easy to carry a cross. It is easier for you to drop your cross and leave it. But Christ wants us to pick up our cross. And then we will be able and God will help us follow him. Only then. And why? Because only whoever is ruled by the Holy Spirit, that is those who are led, those who walk in the Spirit, and by the Spirit, they, the Spirit they put to death the deeds of their body. Only they will live because only they are sons of God. 
This isn't easy. The Apostle Paul, this is, Apostle Paul says, this is impossible. Who will deliver me from this body of death? But do not be afraid. We have not received a spirit of bondage. A spirit of bondage nor a spirit of fear. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. And we haven't received a spirit of cowardice to be afraid again, but a, a spirit of power and might and of a sound mind. So that we may be able, through the love of God the Father and the grace of Christ and the communion, fellowship of Holy Spirit to be able to walk according to the Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will confirm with our spirit that we are children of God, will bear witness. And then it will be a sure thing that we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, because we suffer with Him. We suffer with Christ bearing His cross, walking in His path and His road, despising the easy road of the flesh, and choosing the narrow gate and the difficult path. This is a calling. Do you want to follow me? Not me, Christ. If we say yes, then we can say like the Apostle Paul, we thank God for He will deliver us from this body of death through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. He and only He can do this. The triune God, the Father through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit is able, He wants. We cannot but we are willing. Amen.